Visible Welding, in partnership with InterTest Incorporated, is pleased to present a comprehensive assembly overview for the WeldWatch EDU Weld Tutoring System, which was developed with major funding by the U.S. Navy through the NSRP program. In this video, we've broken down the system assembly into six segments. First, we're going to unbox the equipment. Second, we're going to assemble the camera arm. Third, we're going to put the camera into the arm and show you how to adjust that. Fourth, we're going to assemble the computer arm and put that on the table. Fifth, we're going to put the computer in the case and show you how to wire that up. And lastly, sixth, we're going to power everything up and go through a checklist to make sure everything is ready to go. Hi, I'm Steve Edelson from Visible Welding. This is Will Haberman from InterTest. Today we're going to unbox the WeldWatch EDU system and show you how to put it together. The first step, of course, is to have a nice workspace and we're going to mount it right on this table here. In your lab, of course, you'd use a metal table for welding, but we're going to use this wooden table. Please don't use wood at home. Anyway, uh, all the tools you need are inside. I say that with a little asterisk because uh, you might need a Phillips screwdriver for some advanced adjustments we'll show you. But uh, basically, you're ready to go. You'll need some power, 110, uh, three outlets, and, uh, and a table. So without further ado, we'll please open it up and let's get going. We've taken all the components out of the box and we laid them out on the table here. Let me tell you what, uh, what you're going to see. First, we have the arm for the uh, camera, and that's in that brown box Bill's it's pointing to. We also have an arm for the computer, and that's in the white box. Behind that, in that protective case, is the, the actual camera, the star of the show. And over here, we have the Microsoft Surface Pro computer and a keyboard and a steel case that we're going to put it in and put it on the table. This is our USB hub. And uh, you may have a different one, but uh, there's always a hub in there for plugging the things into the surface. We have some nice dust covers to protect it from shop dust when you're not using it. And a, uh, a desk lamp, which is actually very handy for backlighting and other things you'll want to do when you make a, your videos. Well, before you begin, I have a couple of tips for you. First, allow up to an hour for the assembly. And second, you're going to need 110 volt power. And we're going to plug three things in, so you'll need at least three outlets. But let's take a look at what's inside the camera arm box, and Will's going to help us put it together. So I'm going to open this box up now. We're going to take out the different components. There are some instructions which you may if you need later, so keep those safe. This is the main arm, two segments. There's an extension, give you better reach across the table. This is the camera mount end, along with a swivel case for the camera. These pieces are pieces of the base, and it's a flexible base for different configurations. We're going to show you how to mount it on a table, which is the primary use. And here we have the miscellaneous screws, and there's a wrench in here, which is going to be key, this wrench for putting the cones together. Now we're going to assemble the base for the camera, and uh, we start with uh, the nut that uh, is going to hold the tube onto the base, and Will's going to insert that, and there's a a notch right in there. It fits right into a slot and once it's in there and he's going to then hold that in with your finger and you're going to put the uh, flat base on top of that tube. Uh, it's got a little peg that uh, seats on there. That's good. And then we need the mounting bracket below that that's going to go under the table. So that goes on with line up the holes and the notches and uh, then there's a one nut there with the tapered end that you're going to put in to hold that on. You get that threaded that looks good. Next step is to put the bottom of the bracket on, so uh, that'll go below the table. And that actually has a few orientations for different thicknesses of the table, and Will's going to put it on to match our table. There we go. Again, one threaded uh, screw uh, goes in nice and tight. Very good. Now it's ready to go under the table. So one end goes threaded in, and the end that he has his finger on has the hex nut, so you want to make sure that's on the bottom so you'll be able to tighten it. We have a little uh, metal plate that uh, can spread the force out so you don't punch through the table. He's going to put that on top of that screw that he's going to tighten. Great. All right, we're in good shape. We've got a nice solid base. Now we're going to put the extension on. Uh, we've given you an 8-inch extension. gives you a better reach on the table. And it fits right in the end slot there. It goes right right in there. There's also a lock. It's just a little plastic retainer with a Phillips screw and you snug that up and that will keep it from being pulled out accidentally. All right, now the arm fits right into the base. Just get it lined up straight and it'll slide right in. Now we're ready to put the uh, camera mount on. So first we give you a ball swivel. It gives you a better position of the camera. So he's going to take out that knob. 
screws on the back and the, once that's tight, it's just gonna put that right on the end. It's gonna slip right in and be another joint. Now you can see that swivels around and the camera moves up and down on its end. Okay, and then we're gonna show you how to adjust a couple of things that you'll want. The first is to adjust the tension on the camera so that the arm doesn't go up and down, uh, it stays where you want it. And that's that hex nut, again, the same tool, Will showing. And if, if he pushes the arm up and down, down now, you'll see it stay uh, counterbalanced. There's a, a second hex nut right under the camera mount that allows you to tighten that hinge. So if you want it to either be locked in place uh, or you can, by tightening it just a little bit, get a little bit of friction so you can move it and yet it stays where it is. One last uh, tool that's in there, there's a very small hex wrench, which Will's picking up now, and that's there's a set screw right in the base of the arm there. If you don't want the arm to be able to be lifted out easily, you can tighten that set screw. Now it's time to open up the actual camera and get it mounted up on the arm. We're gonna take the parts out uh, one by one and show you. This is a cooling tube, which is used in industrial. If it's in your, in your camera, you don't need it. You can just toss it away. This is the actual camera. We're gonna take off this and the cable. Lay that out here. There's a set of extra filters. We're gonna talk about those later. And a tool and some extra screws for you. All right, we're ready to put the camera onto the arm and get it set up. And everything swivels, so sometimes it's a little tricky to get it uh, screwed on there. And uh, you can take the ball mount off. If you just take that screw threaded knob off the back as Will's doing. Now we're gonna attach it to the camera and then we'll put it back on the arm. And with that back knob nice and tight, it'll be strong on the arm. And if you need to swivel it, you loosen that small knob in the front and now you have full movement all around. And when you get it faced the way you want, you're gonna tighten that knob and have it stay where it should be. Now we want to get that cable off the table, so uh, we uncoil it there a little bit and we're going to put it on the arm. Now it's a pretty stiff cable, we have a lot of shielding on it for a shop environment. So uh, we're going to put the cable uh, into the clip that's on the bottom segment of the arm. And it just uh, clips, clips right in and you squeeze that, it fits into a slot and it should lock on either side. And there you are, and we leave that slack in the cable so you can swivel the camera and the arm and all that, you don't have to worry about it. Now it's time to unpack the arm for the computer and get that assembled, and we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to open this baby up. Now it's time to assemble the arm for the computer, and again, we're going to start with the base. And here there's two pieces of the base that will screw together with a long bolt. You choose the bolt by the length of the table you have. We've always just had the short one, it's been long enough, so Will's going to put that together, he's insert that through, and then the, the bolt catches it from the top side there, he's got to thread that in. And then once it's threaded, you can put that below the table and tighten the, the bolt and that will pull the clamp right up. Now with the base on solidly, um, the next arm segment just fits right on it and snaps on. It's just, you have to get it straight and it pops right in. And now we're going to take the next segment and do the same on the end of that. There we are. Now you can see that it bends, it floats up and down, a lot like the camera arm. Now we're ready to put the case on for the computer. And it goes right on the end of the arm, and it's got a nice snap-on fitting. Slide that right in. Snaps on with a nice pleasant click, and there you are. And as you can see, you can tilt it, you can swivel it. Now this is a locking case, and the, as you saw, the keys are on a chain on the back. You just unlock it, and when they're both out, you just lift it forward and it unhooks from the other side. And now the next step we want to do before we put the surface in is get the USB hub uh, mounted on the back of it so it's ready. And the hub's got a very strong Velcro backing, which is also on the back of the case right now. And so we're just going to push it on. Now we're ready to mount our computer in the case and wire everything up. So the first thing we do is unbox our Surface Pro computer. Now this surface has been prepared, it already has our software on it and has an extra Gorilla Glass layer uh, already adhered to the front, so it's, uh, it's double armored, appropriate for a shop. Now we're going to take the power supply out of the surface box, and also in that box, as you'll notice, Will's unpacking it, there's a white adapter that lets you use any monitor you want, giant screen, TVs, anything. Keyboard comes as a separate box, but they snap right in. All right, now we're ready to put the surface computer into the steel case. It just fits right into the main area there. Once you have the lid off, you're just going to lay it down. It's good to have it facing up so it doesn't fall out while you're working on it. And that's right in there. There's some foam in the back, which keeps tension. Now we're going to put the power cord onto it, and then uh, we'll be able to close it up. So nice magnetic 
fitting on the side, just out that nice hole there, and now we can put the top on. So it, the top hooks on one side, on the left of the computer, and then the two latches on the right, you push those in. Now we can turn it around and, and see what we've got. Okay, now we're ready to hook the power on the hub. The hub has its own DC converter that we're going to plug one end of that into the jack on the bottom and plug the other end in the wall. All right, you see a little green light. And now we have the USB cable that we can connect the hub to the surface. The big square end goes into the matching socket on the bottom of the USB hub. And then that cord goes into the USB 3 hub on the side of the surface itself. There's two adjustments on the arm for the surface that you may want to adjust. The first one is a tension up and down. If the surface is moving, the spring is too strong and it's going up, or it's too weak and it's going down on its own, you can adjust that. And the second one is adjust the swivel of the surface up and down. There's two, uh, two nuts under, on the underside with that same wrench. And if you tighten those a little bit, it gets stiffer. If you loosen them, it'll now fall down by itself. Now we're ready to hook the computer to the camera. The strain relief at the bottom of the base is nice and tight, and the best way to get this big cable through is just to feed through the USB ends. And then once those are through, you can then gently pull the rest of the cable through. And that's going to go up into the USB hub, so we're going to get some slack. In the upper arm there, there's a nice case to hold those. So Will's going to take that off. It just pulls off from either side. There's two pins. It comes right off, and then you lay the cables in, and you're going to snap that back in place. Now we'll just plug into the USB hub. Any slots, doesn't matter. Great. Oh, one more thing I want to mention before that. You see this green ground wire, which is hanging down. This is an extra ground. The cables are all shielded, and uh, you shouldn't need this extra ground, but it's there just in case. All right, now we're going to power up the surface. And it should boot right up into the app, and the camera should be running. While it's going on the screen here, this is the icon to start the app, this is the manual, and this is a direct link to our website. It's found the camera, initialized it, and we're looking at a table. We have a ruler there, and if we go to the camera settings, we can zoom in a little bit. We can autofocus. Look around, find its best focus, and now it's ready. All right, now that we're up and running, let's look at a couple of the features, the, the simple things you're going to need to, to get going. So the first thing is all the controls are hidden. We hit the show button, and now we see our four main buttons, camera, picture, video recording settings, and playing back videos. So in the camera, this is your, your first thing, and we already did where we zoomed. You can zoom in or out and get your picture wider view or whatever, and you can focus either manually or uh, automatically. I always just hit auto, I leave the iris on auto, I leave the LED on auto for lighting. Start with auto, it really works almost all the time, just perfectly. Okay. One thing you might want to set on the camera settings is the resolution. So the default is 640, 480, that's what we're at, that's what we recommend. But sometimes you have a shot that's long and thin. And you may want to go to one of these, like a um, 640 by 360. And the reason you want to go to a different resolution like this is it saves a lot of memory. If you're recording things and, and you have a long straight seam, sometimes you may want that. Again, I'm going to recommend just stay at 640, 480 uh, for almost everything and, uh, and go on with that. The next thing I want to show you is um, under the recording, you can set some settings, and the most um, ones you're going to use is how does it record? And typically, when I'm doing lessons, I use arc auto record when the arc is visible. It's just what it says. When the camera sees an arc in the picture, it knows it should be recording it. It will number it, and it will automatically switch to its um, arc on state. Okay, and then when the video um, when the arc goes off, it'll stop recording. Now you can have it start recording actually two seconds before the arc. So that way you can see the, the ignition of the arc. So this video actually starts a little bit before. It's always keeping a history. And you can have it actually record past the arc going off. Here we have it set for two seconds. Let you see that the arc go off, a little cool down. Are they holding the, the gas there? Okay. You can make AVI files if you want to email them. They're a lot smaller, but the resolution's lower. So I recommend we stick with RAW when you're using your internal recordings. You can always make an AVI later. 
Okay. The last thing I'm going to show you on this thing is how you play a video. So here are some recorded videos, and they either fall into the temporary category of ones that you're recording, and if you like them, you move them over to the keep, and the instructions show you how to do that. And here's, you just touch one you want to play, and it'll replay, okay? And while it's playing, you can pause, you can slow down, we can go half speed, quarter speed, 16th speed, you can get it down to a very, very slow stop, back up if you want. So once you have a video and you want to examine it, you can look at it in great detail. That's pretty much it. As I say, it's very automatic. Turn on the camera, focus, zoom, and you're pretty much ready to go. All right, we have everything all plugged in. Let's go over it and make sure we haven't forgotten anything, and then we'll fire it up. So to start, we got our surfaces in the case. Case is locked, good. Keys here are nice and safe. We have the power for the surfaces wired up through the channel, that's good. Our USB hub is mounted here. We have the USB hooked to the surface. We have the USB powered, good. This is the extra ground wire that we're not gonna use, but we then follow the cables for the camera are plugged into the USB hub, good. Comes down, comes over to the camera. We got our lamp set up, everything is to be fine. Let's start the program and see if we get the picture we're looking for. So we're gonna hit the weld watch icon. Program comes up, looks for the camera. So we're ready to roll. Don't forget, we have the manual on the machine you have, and there's an icon right here for reading it. Just bring it up, and it tells what every control in the software does and some advice for getting shots, different setup options. So take a look at it. Uh, I think it'll answer a lot of your questions uh, and give you also some good tips. Thank you very much.